Okay, look at that. Only 10 minutes late, sorry about that. All right, so today it's just not a good day for this to happen either, because we have some cool code to write. So we're gonna keep talking about sorting. Uh, last time, remember, we got through um, insertion sort, uh, which had this problem, which is that it had an on squared runtime. And so today, our goal was gonna be to look at ways that we could do better than that. Um, Screen. Oh, I hate everything about you. Let's see. There we go. Okay, sweet. All right. So, so the the main sorting algorithm we're talking about and implement completely today is merge sort. And merge sort is a nice algorithm in the sense that it has very predictable performance. And so here's the key insight that underlies merge sort, which is that it may be difficult to sort things, to sort arrays, right? That's what we're spending a couple of classes on. But if you give me two arrays that are already sorted, merging them is straightforward. So here I've got two arrays that are already sorted, the one at the top and the one at the bottom. And my goal is to combine them together in a, to a single, sorted array, okay? So I've got two sorted arrays, and my goal is to combine them together, and you know, this is not hard to do, right? In this case, the two arrays are sorted in descending order, so I know that the smallest values are at the front, and essentially what I do over and over again is I look at the first two values in the array. Sorry, I look at the first value in array one, the first value in array two. I say, which one is smaller? I take that one out, and then I move on. So now I do the same thing. Okay, so now the second array has the smallest value, right? Now the second array again has the smallest value. The second array has the smallest value again. So as long as it's smaller, I'm gonna keep pulling values out. Okay, now I'm back to the first array. Uh, now I'm pulling values out of the first array, get the last value from the second array, and the last value from the first array. All right, so this is a straightforward process to take two arrays that are already sorted and merge them together. So let's implement this. This will be our first challenge today, and again, this is a terrible day for this to happen because typing on this keyboard is gonna be an adventure. Okay, so let's do this. Oh, go ahead, I don't know what you are, but go away. All right, so what, like, what is the first thing that we're going to do here? Um, I'm given two arrays, and my job here is to merge them together. You guys will get a chance to do this on the homework uh, this week. What's the first step here? What's the first thing I want to do? Just going back to our sanity check. Yeah. Yeah, let's handle null cases. And actually, we'll handle two corner cases here. We'll handle null, and we'll also handle cases where um, either of the arrays is empty. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to say if first is equal to null and second is equal to null. In that case, we're just going to return null. We don't have any values to merge, so we're just gonna return an empty array. Actually, not an empty array, we're gonna return a null array, okay? Now, let's say that one of the arrays you gave me is null or empty, all right? So let's say that first is null. So if I get to this condition, this means that first is null, but second's not null. So you gave me one array, but the other one was null. Or let's also handle the case here where first is empty. If first.length is equal to zero, what do I want to do here? So if you, if, if you gave me a null array, if, you, if first is null, but second is okay, or first is empty, but second has, um, you know, might have some values in it, what should I do here? I don't really have any work to do, I have an empty array. So if I have an empty array and one that's full of values, how do I merge them together? Just return the one that has some data in it. Yeah, so let's just return second here. Okay. And then, finally, my last condition down here, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do something very similar to what I did up here. So I'm basically gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna say if second is equal to null, or second dot 
length. Ah, is equal to zero. Return first. Good. All right, so I've handled my corner cases here. Give me two seconds here. I let's see. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna exit full screen. You're going to find out something about me today. Let's see. Our language. Nope. Well, one thing you're finding out about me is that I'm terrible at using Windows. Years ago when I was in college, I started to have some wrist problems, so I switched to, does anyone here use the Dvorak keyboard layout? Anyway, the keys are in different positions, so I've been using this for like 15 years. Uh, that's why I look like a total uh, idiot when I need to type on a, a keyboard with the normal layout, but now I'm, now I'm good, all right. What led to one of my key observations about helping students is to never touch their computer, because I can't type on your computer anyway, I'm gonna look like a moron, all right. So I've handled my corner cases here. Now what do I need to do? So now let's actually create the array, the, combi the combined array. So let's say, uh, and we're gonna say, make this into a new array, and it needs to be big enough to hold all the values from both arrays. All right, so I've got a combined array. Now, my loop here is gonna go through the combined array and kind of pull things one by one out of the two smaller arrays. Um, but I'm also gonna need to keep track of where I am in my smaller array. Remember, I'm assuming my smaller arrays are sorted. So, the smallest value in the first array is currently at index zero, and the smallest value in the second array is currently in index zero and I'm gonna use these variables to keep track of where those are. So now I've got my loop here. I'm gonna go through my combined array using our good old loop syntax. All right, so now who can, who can walk me through what to do here? All right, so I've, now I've set up the problem. I've got a loop that's gonna, so essentially what I need to do is in each iteration of this loop, I need to either pick a value from the first array or the second array and copy it into the combined array at position i. So I'm going front to back from my combined array, and essentially what I need to do is I need to look at the front of the first array, the front of the second array, figure out which is smaller, and then stick that one, okay? So, so there, actually, there are actually four conditions here, but, but who can give me one of them? What am I gonna put in here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, exactly. So let's say here, if first first index is less than second second index, what this means is that the first array has the smaller value, right? Whatever the value is that I'm currently looking at in the first array, it's smaller, and so I'm gonna pull it in to my combined array. Let's say combined here is equal to first, first index. And then I'm gonna advance my first index so I'm looking at the next value in the first array. Okay? Otherwise, I'll take stuff out of my second array. Okay? Is this gonna work? Let's try it. All right, I gotta put a return statement in here that's kind of saying the one I have right now is, is not. Okay, scroll down a little bit, pull this down, give us a little bit more room. Perfect. All right, so now down here I'm gonna return combined. Let's run this code and we'll see what happens. Oh, okay, so I've got a, I've got an array index out of bounds exception and it's happening on line 15, so it's happening right here. So what's happening here? I'm trying to merge two arrays of size four and the array size out of bound exception that I got is of size four. So can someone explain to me what happened? Why am I not done? You could try to figure out a little bit more about what's going on, yeah, in the back. Yep. Yeah, so essentially, that at some point when I'm going through here, okay, and I don't know when that's gonna be because it depends on, you know, the values that are in the two arrays, but at some point, the first array is gonna be out of values or the second array is gonna be out of values. So think about it this way, when I get to the last value that I put in my combined array, one of the two arrays is empty, okay? And I don't know if it's the first one or the second one. And so the problem is, at that point, I've advanced my first index or second index past the end of the array. So it doesn't hold a valid value anymore, okay? And so essentially the way I have to handle this is with another set of conditions that are gonna make this statement a little bit less satisfying. So I say if first index is first dot length, what does this mean? So if first index is equal to first dot length, what does that mean about first? Somebody who hasn't volunteered an answer yet today. I've gone through and I've been pulling things off one at a time. Yeah. Yeah, first is empty, right? So at this point, I've advanced first index through all of its valid values, and it's basically at the end. So at this point, first is empty, and what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna pull, so I can essentially cut and paste the code I have down here for a second. So at this point, the values I need are in second. Oops, stop. Put, let me full screen this again. Uh, I can figure out how to do that again. There we go, all right. So here, I'm gonna put, put page name this under. All right, can I successfully cut and paste on a Windows computer or not? Let's find out. Apparently not. Maybe it's just a terrible. All right, one more time. The last option key here. Ah, look at that. Okay. I guess you can be a round of applause for that. Please. Look at that. All right. So if the first array is empty, then the values I need have to be in the second array. Remember, the second array is all sorted. So at this point, I'm just pulling things out of the second array. And I, I could improve this. I could just stop here and take all the values of the second array, but let's just keep the outer loop the same, okay? All right, so there's one more thing I need to do, right? 
So I'm handling the case where the first array is out of values, and then I'm handling both cases where both arrays still have values, and I'm picking the one at the front properly, but there's one last case I need to handle here, which is when, very similar to what I have already up here. Remember, I don't know which array is gonna run out of values first. Yeah? Oh, both arrays are empty, I'm done. Close, right? So I'll never get to the point where both arrays are empty. Yeah, so I have to essentially do the same piece of code except for the second array. Right, so I have to say if second index is equal to second dot length, then this means that my second array is empty and I should pick something from the first array. So again, I can cut and paste, stop that. I can cut and paste this code up here. Okay. So again, this has gotten sort of gnarlier than, than we would want, but it's actually not that, not that complicated. There are, there are two conditions I need to handle if one of the arrays is empty. So if one of the arrays is empty, all the data I need is in the other array. If the first array is empty, take something from the second array. If the second array is empty, take something from the first array, okay? If I get down to line 21, it means that both arrays still have data in them. It's really snowing out there, it's pretty cool. Um, and I need to pick the smaller value. Right? And there I'm just using a conditional based on the value of the, the uh, item in each index. All right, so let's try this now and see if this has solved our problem uh, with the array index being out of bounds, and it has, okay? And now what you can see is that I've also successfully merged both arrays. So now let's try some corner cases here, since we're defensive programmers. Let's try the case where all of the smallest values are in one array. The other array only has larger values, okay? Make sure this works, so it seems like it does. We could turn those around and make sure it works too, but I'm, I'm pretty uh, confident with this right now. Okay, any questions about this? This is like the hard, I mean, to the degree that merge sort is hard to implement, this is the hard part. We haven't actually implemented a sorting algorithm yet. What we've done is we've implemented something that can take two arrays together two sorted arrays and merge them together. But what you're gonna see, what's very cool about merge sort, is we can use this to build up a recursive sorting algorithm. And when we implement the recursive sorting algorithm, we'll come back and grab this code, but the actual um, additional uh, code we need to write at that point is really, really quite small. All right, any questions about this before we move on? Good sort of recursive, sorry, Im imperative programming review. You know, this is one of those things that's conceptually not hard, a little bit tricky to, to translate into code. Okay. So now the question becomes, how do we actually use this to, well, let's talk about the runtime, uh, time complexity of this first, okay? Let's go back and look at our implementation, okay? How many steps is this going to take? Who can talk me through this? Here's my, here's my, um, Here's my algorithm. Here's the implementation of the algorithm, sorry. Um, how, whoop, sorry. How many steps will this require? Yeah. Yeah, so to, uh, to merge arrays of size n and m, it's gonna take n plus m, okay? And on some level, if we think about n as representing the size of the combined array, this is O n. Okay, so if my combined array is gonna contain n values, I know that when I call the function, right? If one has five and the other has three, the combined array is gonna have eight, right? So I know how many values are gonna be in the combined array. It's O n in the size of the combined array. My loop goes through that array one at a time. It's not doing anything fancy. There's no break or continue. There's no nested loops. All I'm doing is array accesses and comparisons. Those are constant time operations, okay? So, and the other cool thing about this, right, is that there's no data dependence here, right? So if I go back and look at this, there's nothing in here, like this loop is gonna run combined array size times. It doesn't matter what's in first or second. Right? So this is not like insertion sort where we had breaks and stuff like that that were in there. This is never going to depend on the data, okay? So worst case is ON, best case is ON, average case is ON. That's something that we like about merge sort. It's predictable. And this is really the why, 
right? Because the merge itself is predictable, okay? It can be two arrays of size, uh, combined size n, it's gonna take O n to merge. Now again, there are some, there are some sort of, uh, you know, cases where you can get a little bit better performance here, but, uh, particularly if one array is out of values, right? Um, but in general, O n, right? And again, the way that we've implemented this, there's no dependence on the values in first and second for how long it's gonna take. The behavior of the algorithm depends on the values in first and second, but its runtime does not. All right. Okay, so I've now, so now we've sort of worked through this observation, which is that it's easy to merge two arrays together into one sorted array. But how do we use this to actually build a sorting algorithm, okay? So the question is, where did those sorted arrays come from? Right? I gave you two sorted arrays of size four, but I didn't tell you how to sort those arrays. However, think about it. Your merge step took two sorted arrays of size four and created a sorted array of size eight. So, I have one of the ingredients that I need for a recursive algorithm. I have a way to combine the results together. If you give me two sorted arrays, I'll combine them together, and what you get is a bigger sorted array. So I'm merging the results from smaller problems together to get a solution to a bigger problem, right? The question is, how do we make the problem smaller first? So if I give you the big problem, how do you make it small enough that you can start to build up those combined solutions? And the answer is to go back to this property of arrays that we looked at when we talked about the fact that arrays are also recursive data structures. Every subarray of an array, every contiguous section of an array is an array, right? So here, I can think of this as one array with eight values, so I can think of it as two arrays with four values. And this one on the left, I can think of as two arrays of two values, and that array on the left, I can think of as one array with one value. And so I can keep breaking my big problem down into these smaller problems. Now, what's kind of cool about this, you know, so if I take an array and I break it down, let's say I break it into two pieces, so I'm always gonna split it in half. I take an array of size n and I create two small arrays of size n over two. And I take the arrays and I break them down until I have two arrays of size n over four. What's the smallest subproblem? So now I know how to break the problem down into pieces. I know how to put the pieces back together. But what's the smallest subproblem here that I'm gonna have to stop and solve immediately? All right, so I know how to build bigger arrays, sorted arrays from smaller sorted arrays. What's my, you know, and I know how to take a big array and break it into smaller arrays, but how do I get to an array that's already sorted? Yeah. Yeah. So an array that is empty or has one value in it is sorted, okay? So if I start with an array that's empty or has one value, it's sorted. And I can take two of those and use my merge function to make a bigger sorted array. And then I can take that sorted array and another sorted array and make a bigger sorted array. And I can continue to do this until I've sorted the entire array, all right? So I have all the ingredients I need here for a recursive solution to sorting, which is cool, right? I make the problem smaller by breaking the array into, into two parts. And what I'm gonna, sh um, when we talk about the runtime of, qu of merge sort, and actually in particular when we talk about the runtime of quick sort, which we'll get to on Wednesday, one of the things that's important to note here is the size of these arrays matters. So when I do merge sort, I'm always gonna try to break, I'm gonna break the arrays into equal pieces, as much as I can. Sometimes if I have an array with size three, I'm gonna end up with one of size two and one of size one. If I have an array of size seven, I get three and four. But I can always have them be almost equal, right? This is important for the runtime. But here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna break the problem, make the problem smaller by breaking the arrays into smaller pieces. They're roughly the same size. The smallest subproblem is an array that's either empty or has one value in it. When I get there, I'm done. An empty array is also already sorted. An array with size one is sorted, okay? So now I have, I've solved the problem. I created a sorted array. 
how do I merge them back together? I use this merge function, okay? All right, so, so again, to, to do merge sort, which we're about to do, our base case is we've reached an array with just one value or zero value, right? Sometimes that happens because of how the arrays divide up. The recursive step is to split the array into two pieces, and I combine results by using this really nice merge function that I just wrote, right? I just wrote merge. So I know how to combine results. All right. The last thing you need to know how to do, that I'm gonna use in this example, is you need to figure out how to split the array. So in order to finish the job here, I need to know how to do this step, okay? Now you can implement this function. You guys at this point are far smart enough to implement this function, but let's not bother. Let's just use a helper function that already exists in the arrays library. So there's a library of, um, this is a Java library, that contains a bunch of functions that run on arrays. They don't, now this is an important thing. Arrays, as a Java object, only contain that one length property. They don't actually don't have any methods. These are static methods that take an array as an argument and do interesting things to it. So for example, there's one that we're about to use that's particularly useful in here that's called copy of range, right? Copy of range takes a bunch of different types of arrays. Here we're gonna use an int, and it copies the specific, the specified range and returns you a reference to that new array, all right? Uh, you might also notice that down here at the bottom are a bunch of sorting functions, right, that will sort arrays for you, right? Um, so that's a little bit, uh, th that's what you would actually do if you were, weren't trying to learn how to implement sorting algorithms, you just use the ones that are already built into Java. All right, so the first thing, let's, l before we go on, let's go back and get our merge code. Let's rescue our merge code from earlier. Uh, where'd it go? Yeah, here we go. I do not want to write this again. So, and now I know how to cut and paste. Grab this, and then, oop, uh-oh. Undo. Well, what if I undo here? <laughs> Bless you. Ah, sweet, okay. Control Z. Control C, and then let's go back to where we were. All right. This is gonna be really cool. All right. All right, so let's drop in merge here. Great, so I have the merge code that we just wrote. And my goal here is to use this to implement merge sort. All right, so merge sort is a recursive algorithm. What's my base case? I have one argument, which is an input array. What's the base case here? What's the smallest problem? When do I know, when do I know when to stop? Yeah, it's a, it, less than or equal to one, yeah. So if my input array size, I'm gonna say if input array dot length is less than or equal to one, just return input array. That array is already sorted. Otherwise, okay, and, and again, this is, this is, you know, this is kind of, kind of cool. Um, what I need to do is I need to do two things. So I basically have to sort the right half half, I need to sort the left half, or right is, uh, actually let's start with the left one, it's a little more easy to think about. So the left is the first uh, half of the values in the array. Then I'm gonna sort the right half, and then I'm gonna merge the results, okay? So I know how to do the merge. Right, so essentially, um, so let's say int is equal to merge sort. Um, now here's where I'm gonna use this function from the arrays library. So this is going to give me, this is gonna give me a copy of the first half of input array. 
arrays dot copy of range from zero to input array dot length over two. My second, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna sort that part, right? So these are my recursive steps. My second, well here, let's call this left, just because that's what I called it. So the left, half of my array is here. The right half is the result of running that, but I'm going over two, so this is now the other half of the array. I think check style's gonna get angry with me unless I do this, okay. So now, these are my recursive steps. I'm writing this out a little bit longer than we will in a minute, just so you kind of see what happens, right? So remember, this is a recursive function. Unless I'm at the base case, I don't know how to solve the problem. What I do know is how to make the problem smaller. So here what I've done is I've said, well, I don't know how to sort an array unless it only has one or zero elements in it. If it's got more than that, I'm gonna break it into two pieces and rely on the fact that eventually I'll know how to sort it. If I keep making the problem smaller and smaller, I'm gonna get to these small subproblems. Now, okay, so at this point, I have a sorted copy of the left half of the array an assorted copy of the right half of the array, what do I need to do to finish the job? Right, so again, I don't know how this merge sort function I just called works, right? All I know is that it will eventually sort the array. But now I have two sorted arrays, one containing the values that were in the first part of the array, the one containing the values that were in the second part of the array. What do I need to do to glue these back together? Someone who hasn't Contributed yet? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to merge them. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. I'm going to call merge, right? My merge function takes a left and a right array. So essentially, what I'm doing here is I'm going to do merge left right. That's it. My merge function takes a, a you know a first and a second array and returns a new array that has twice as many values in it. Or sorry, the, the, the number of the, the you know, first dot length times second dot length. Okay, let's see if this actually works. Oh, check style's mad at me about something. Array brackets at a legal position, that's so weird. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, I'm declaring a reference to an array. Aha, look at that. Magic. All right, like I said, the recursive code here is not that complicated. Any questions about this? Before we talk a little bit about runtime, I can make this even more appealing in the following way. So let's just do this. Let's do return. I don't have to create these temporary arrays. What I can do is return merge of merge short of that. Yeah, still gonna be mad at me. This took too long. Put a comma in here. Now I'm just combining these, get rid of the temporary arrays, and it works. Okay, questions about this? This is our first recursive sorting algorithm. Breaking the problem down, you know, again, I've got my base case up at the top, and then in one statement now, I'm combining both my recursive steps, which are to make the problem smaller by looking at the first half of this input array and the second half of the input array. I'm calling merge sort to sort those two, and then when I'm done, I, what those return is a sorted copy of the first half of the array, sorted copy of the second half of the array, and I use merge to glue those together. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how long this is going to take. Because this is a little tricky. Just getting some intuition for this. Right, so let's walk through an example. And let's walk through an example with a 
a carefully chosen value of the number, right, which is a power of two. That's helpful in thinking about this. Okay. So let's think about if I'm sorting an array that has eight values in it. The first, um, merge. So if I think about it, I go all the way down, okay? The first merge step is essentially taking eight arrays. So I broke the problem down into a small, small, small. Finally, I found eight arrays of size one. My first merge merges those eight arrays of size one into four arrays of size two. So that's four O N merges where N is two, okay? So this is O eight, right? Four times O N. The second merge takes four arrays of size two and merges them into two arrays of size four. So now I've done two O N merges where N is four, right? Remember, the runtime of my merge step depends on how big the arrays are. So now I did two O N merges where N is four. That's also O eight for this step. And now I've got a final merge which takes two arrays of size four into one array that has the, all the original values in it, sorted, okay? So that's one O-N merge, where N is eight. So what's interesting here is that every level contributes O-N, right? It was O-N to do the first set of merges, where N is eight, the size of the original array, okay? As the merges get smaller, I have to do more of them. As they get larger, I'm doing fewer of them. Okay? So I've got O8, ON for one, ON for the second, ON for the third. So now, what drives the runtime here? Every step, every merge level is gonna be ON. Right? But what drives how long this is gonna take? It's the number of levels. Right? Every level contributes ON. Here I had three levels of ON. So, it, and it turns out that some of you that are thinking about thinking this through might have realized that two to the third is eight. Eight log two is three, okay? Every time I make the problem half as small. Remember when we talked about O log run times, we said that frequently those were associated with recursive functions, or recursive algorithms. So here's an example, okay? So I've done three O N steps. Three is eight log two, um, and so this is, and so what I end up with is an O N log N runtime. That is the best that we can do for sorting in the, in, you know, that is the best that a sorting algorithm can do in the worst case, right? So now we have implemented a sorting algorithm that does as well as any sorting algorithm that you can find out there in the worst case. There are sorting algorithms that do a lot better in the best case, but this one will do better, do as, this one achieves optimal performance every time. All right, so here's another visualization of that, just sort of how things are coming through, right? So at the top, I have eight values. Now I've merged them into four sorted arrays. At the second level, I merge them into two sorted arrays. At the third level, I've got one sorted array with everything else. Number of levels is log n in the size of the array. Each step is O n. So to combine the two together, I go get O n log n. Okay, I think we'll stop here, pick up here um, on Wednesday. Sorry about the technical difficulties today. Um, please stay warm out there. It looks like a blizzard going on, have a snowball fight. Um, enjoy some beautiful snow, and I will see you guys on Wednesday. <laughs>